There's a Pennsylvania firehouse uh, that has been shut down temporarily because a few of the volunteer firefighters were caught on a hot mic using some racial slurs, mocking the death of a young eight year old girl who was shot. Um, so let's go to some of these details because that sounds great. Seems like these guys might wanna protect your house. So the firefighters are from Briarcliff Fire Company Station 75, that's in Delaware County. They thought that their conversation following a virtual meeting in late January was private, but the Briarcliff firefighters reportedly didn't realize that their colleagues from the Goodwill station were still on the line. Classic, but uh, Goodwill firefighters recorded the call. And part of that was the original call, by the way, it was to discuss the, call, the consolidation of services between three different fire stations. So this is completely unrelated to anything that they began to talk about afterwards. It's just something that's in their hateful guts. Um, so when they left that call, members of the Briarcliff company stayed on and they started saying things like this. A bunch of effing inwards down there, said one Briarcliff firefighter uh, about this all black Darby Township fire uh, company. That sounds great. The Briarcliff firefighters also called Darby's chief a racial slur and a piece of S, complained about black firefighters being lazy and discussed that there's too many African Americans living in the area. That's the effing problem, one of them said. Blacks are gonna take over stuff. That sounds like um, it leads to all kinds of uh, helpful stuff from those heroes. So they also uh, were now onto the, the eight year old girl that was shot and killed, her name was Fanta Billity, she was eight years old and she was killed by police in Delaware County in August of last year. This is what they said about her. Fanta soda, yeah, orange or Fanta grape, said one of them during the call while he was laughing, even after being told that the girl was shot to death by police. And her family released a statement about how hurtful this was to hear. So the Fanta, the family of Fanta Billity is appalled by the audio recordings of the Briarcliff Fire Department that was made public today. Fanta was a bright, bubbly, innocent child before being killed by careless actions of three Sharon Hill police officers. To speak of her with such disrespect shines the light of shame on those people at the firehouse making those remarks. And to trivialize what this young girl endured that night gives new meaning to, this, to uh, the descriptive despicable. So there's that. Um, so anytime we talk about Black Lives Matter and oh, there's Blue Lives Matter and oh, versus that other matter, and we really, well, why do we have to say Black Lives Matter? Well, because there's, an, insta in, 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 uh, an instance every day where we can see someone that explicitly says the opposite. In fact, laughs about it because she's an eight year old little girl who was shot to death by police. And when people wanna talk about how that needs to stop or maybe police need to be trained a different way or just overhauling the system completely, what are you talking about? You just hate the police. Do the firefighters hate this little girl? Do the police hate that little girl? Do they hate her family that has been dealing with this and will deal with this the rest of their lives? And now this new wrinkle to their pain and trauma about how the people who are supposed to be protecting them, uh, what they think of her, their little girl and her name. Oh, And if they call the fire department to come pull out a fire uh, maybe next door, maybe a part of their house, do you think they have much trust that these people really believe that they should save them? Because they really don't seem to care about their daughter that was killed. Yeah, so um, the reason why the Fanta part of the story is so important is not just because it's a little eight year old girl and they're mocking her death. It's also because the firefighters are supposed to be in a line of work where they save lives. And so obviously they have no respect for African Americans and they think there's literally too much of them in a neighborhood. <laughs> so are you sure they're gonna save your eight year old daughter if she's black? Or are they gonna say, hey, it's a white part of town. I empathize with them. And there, but for the grace of God goes me and my family, I'm gonna go rush into that burning building. Oh, It's a black neighborhood. Are we really gonna rush into the building and risk our valuable white lives for their worthless black lives? That's why it's called Black Lives Matter, because to a lot of people, they don't, including in law enforcement and in the fire department. And guys, Let's give you the best case scenario and say that a lot of right wingers are not racist, okay? And that's why they keep saying, I don't understand, there's no racism. Why is everybody complaining about racism? Is it possible that even if I give you that benefit of the doubt and you don't have a racist bone in your body, you've never thought any of those things, that other people think them, that other people think them, and that that has a massive effect on African Americans in this country? Did you ever think about that? How do you know? that all those other people aren't racist. That when you hang up the phone, even if you're a white person, even if you're a Republican or a right winger, you hang up the phone 
And the other guys don't go, oh, okay, uh, Billy's off the line, Billy's a good guy, and that's why we don't hang out with him much. Now let's tell you all the racist things that we actually think and how we don't wanna work with black firefighters, we don't wanna save black people, and we think they're the N-word. Of course that exists, it's right there. That's not from 1967, that's from today, Rick. Um, when we speak of systemic racism, these are uh, examples upon many that we bring up. Uh, in Wilmington, North Carolina, three police officers were fired because they were overheard saying the N word, saying they wanted to start a civil war, saying they wanted to wipe them off as in black people. In Georgia, there was a police chief named Gene Almond and an officer named John Brooks who were caught on body cam talking about Black Lives Matter protests, saying how slave masters were good and they the slaves were well fed and they were housed. These are police officers and a chief. In Albany, New York, there was a police officer named David Haupt, who very similarly to what Jenk said, and I'm just gonna read his quote. My buddies listen to the scanner and they send me texts all the time and they go, hey, is the suspect ever a white male? And I go blank, no, it's like, I know it sounds terrible to say, but I don't give a blank what anybody says, I sincerely don't. They are the worst blanking race, you can't deny like over the last X amount of months, they are, you know, they're getting worse and people are defending that, are you blanking kidding me? There's also been judges like David Zimmerman, Zim, uh, Zimmerman in uh, Vancouver, Washington, who was caught saying the N word, a Manhattan family court clerk, Donna A. Pranito, put up ridiculous posts on social media calling for the deaths of two Democratic politicians. Tom Cotton said the slavery is a necessary evil. The head of the New York Police Union, after Donald Trump said that they need to not be so nice on anyone they're arresting, then endorsed Donald Trump. And then even at the January 6th insurrection, there were uh, off duty police officers, there were guards at jails, tons of people who work in law enforcement. So again, as I preface, when we say systemic racism, these are countless examples and of it. By the way, to address the reverse racism line, uh, people like say, oh, well, black folks, they could be racist. Now, these, as you mentioned, all those things, and specifically here, you're in a position of power and influence over someone else's life or their career mm -hmm. or anything else. So if these Firefighters, as I mentioned before, are racist. They determine whether or not they help you to a certain degree. If the family of Fanta is racist against white people, what is it about their thoughts that's gonna affect these firefighters? Nothing, that's the difference. So you can talk about how black folks hate white folks. What is it that they can do throughout the system that will affect their lives and keep them or take them down or keep them down? Not very much, but it always happens the, the other way. But let's go ahead and offset it by saying there's this nonsense thing called reverse racism. That's why systemically, that's the problem. So yesterday on the show, we talked about Gary Chambers uh, political ad. He's a great progressive running uh, for Senate in Louisiana. You should definitely check out his campaign. Um, uh, Chambersforlouisiana.com, I believe. Um, so Gary in that ad mentioned that uh, when a, a black man was elected uh, to go to Congress, um, uh, about 100 years ago, actually, uh, the whites in Louisiana uh, said, no, we're not gonna seat you, and why? They made up the issue of voter fraud, okay? Mm. So even back then, right after the Civil War, they were pretending <laughs> that black people had too much power in this country. And they're still pretending that. Mm -hmm. It's absurd, it's the most absurd thing you've ever heard. Uh, are most of the fire departments uh, black? And there's a couple of white fire departments, and that's why white folks are like, well, well we are besieged. We were Guys, look, I wanna make one other point about Look, any rational person knows it's absurd the idea that black people have too much power in this country. As we show you these tapes of people in actual power saying these things over and over again. But I'm, I'm worried that, that a lot of people will hear the this police scanner stuff that Ricky said, and it will further enforce reinforce their racism. Well, if the cops are saying that's who the criminals are. Look, I'll give you an example of my people, Turks. In America, our crime rate is nearly non-existent, okay, why? Because it's really hard to immigrate here. So almost all the Turks here are like doctors and engineers and apparently talk show hosts, okay? So we're, I know it's a funny thing, but we're wealthier than the average because of the, the professional class that we're in. 
So there's almost no crime for Turks in America. In Germany, crime for Turks is really high. Why? Because they're poor. Poor Turks can drive to Germany, but they can't drive to America. So it's a different socioeconomic class. And so the Germans in, uh, uh, go, oh, the Turks are the obviously the inferior race. They're the ones that do all the crime. Here, we do none of the crime, because it isn't about the race. It's about your socioeconomic condition. It's so obvious, yet that has actually been used to fuel even further racism, which puts people in a bigger socioeconomic hole, and then they get this vicious cycle of racism over and over again. And that's what you see every time you lift up a rock, and then they tell us, no, 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 there's nothing under that rock, and there is no racism left in the country. It's patently absurd. All right, My guys. very last point on yeah. this, very quickly, they've served the community for 50 years. I wonder in those 50 years, what else has transpired? And as you said, the calls that they maybe just didn't go out to because receiving a 30 day suspension is nothing. Thanks for watching the Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.